Chip, there's a lot of talk these days in terms of importance of company culture. And I believe last year when you were at James Alter's show, you talked about this and you mentioned that culture, culture eats strategy for lunch. Can you elaborate more and what are some of the trends these days in terms of company culture? So there's a, a theory out of Harvard Business School that's uh, a few decades old, old called the service profit chain. And given that two thirds of the GDP in the world today, gross domestic product, is in service industries, um, it's particularly important. And what it basically shows is that if you create a great culture and create engaged employees, what that tends to mean is ultimately your customers are more loyal because they can feel the innovation as well as the service mindedness of your employees. If your customers are more loyal, you grow market share, you grow profitability, uh, and you create in essence a sustainable business plan. And then in doing that, you can invest back in culture. So think of it as a virtuous circle with uh, culture at the base, then you have employees, customers, profitability, and back to culture. So the reason the culture is important is because a you know, there's a lot of evidence that a company with a strong, engaged culture, but maybe an okay strategy, will, will compete more effectively than a company with a great strategy, but just badly executed because of a bad culture. Mm -hmm. So um, at Airbnb, uh, we learned that it was really important for us to be very thoughtful about who we brought up onto the team. So we had uh, some core values interviewers so that if someone was coming in on as, on as an engineer, they didn't just interview with the people they'd be working with in the engineering team. Mm -hmm. They also had to interview with two core values interviewers who actually looked at, at each employee or, or potential employee as a recruit um, in terms from a culture perspective. Is this person, does this person believe in our core values? Uh, and so that was an interesting thing. Not many companies give some veto power to people outside of the group that that person's going to be working in. So that's one of many different things we did to actually build the culture. Um, and I think uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot of evidence that companies with great cu culture and with happy employees tend to have much faster stock price growth uh, yeah. on the public markets. Yeah, I totally agree. Employee engagement is very important. Having those value alignment is very important because at the end, your, your workplace is your kind of your home and you're interacting with your colleagues. You should be aligned, have some similarities so that it can grow and affect the productivity of the company. Yes, the thing is, though, I mean, we have to be really careful about one particular uh, statement or question that comes up, which is, is this person a culture fit? Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I say that is because sometimes that, set, that question, is this person a culture fit, becomes a way of defining, oh, let's only hire people like us. So in, in some ways, that means there's less diversity. So is, you can, this could be saying like you have a, a what, what we call in Silicon Valley, a bro culture, where it's all, all guys. And yeah. we don't want to hire this woman of color because, in fact, she's not a culture fit based upon who I want to go have a beer with. And well, yeah, go ahead. And why, why is that trend? Because even here in Vancouver, I feel that it's the same. We say that we want diversity, but we only hire people that we think that will go well with the team. We don't want to disturb the team. We don't want to bring someone has outside ideas or others. So why that's it? I feel that there's kind of a contradiction. We want diversity, but we are hiring mini-me. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with <coughs> who, who, who do we feel comfortable with? <clears throat> and comfort is you know, an important part of being in, in the workplace, but discomfort is often where some of the best ideas come from. So co comfort, you know, comfort can breed apathy, whereas discomfort can, can breed innovation. And so, uh, yes, if you want to create a company that feels like it's all your best friends, great, and you may enjoy each other, but you may go nowhere as a company. Yeah. But bringing in a little, someone who might be a little bit of an irritant, and I don't mean irritating people just for the sake of hiring somebody who's just painful to be with. Yeah. But I mean someone who just has a different point of view, uh, comes from a different background. Uh, there's no doubt that when you bring that person on and you give them the space to have a conversation with everybody else where their voice can actually be heard, 
sometimes it opens you up to things that, that you wouldn't have seen because you have blinders on. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Thank you for those tips, Chip. And for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips in terms of company culture, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and tune in tomorrow for another question with you.